Good day, everyone. Um, it's nice to have you all here. So, like, I, I, my name is Muhammad, Muhammad Muzamin Momo. I'm the nutrition officer. So, some of you might already know me, like I was saying before. And for those that do not know, I, 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 I serve on the Alden project to implement nutrition um, and achieve behavior change for our target beneficiaries. So, the purpose of, of nutrition to Alden is while you know the objectives of Alden is to promote um, productivity and um, improve the livelihood of dairy farmers um, and also to pro also support processors, dairy processors to achieve um, to be productive as well. Um, the nutrition arm aims to improve the beneficiaries themselves. So rather than focusing on the feed and fodder aspect, the artificial health, the milk supply and other things we do, infrastructural development, mm -hmm. nutrition is focused on the beneficiaries. So when you improve their hygiene, improve their nutrition, they are more, it complements their productivity because it's only a healthy person that will be able to milk the cows. Only a healthy person will take the milk to the processors. And only a healthy person will listen to you training even. So um, in regards to that, um, the objectives of nutrition in Aldin is to achieve behavior change towards dietary, improving dietary diversity and also improving hygiene practices. The purpose why I have you here today is because you are agricultural extension agents. And the reason why we're here is to be, you're here to be trained on how to support or how to help the beneficiaries cultivate home gardens. So it's, it's technically, you have more expertise towards agriculture than the Jews would have. All right, so that's to answer the questions why I am now working with the E's and not the Jews. So I, I gave a preamble saying that we work in dairy and non-dairy households. So we would discuss how to extend to the non-dairy, how you put the focus, we'll focus right now on the dairy households because you're already training there, so you just support them with these services and technical skills and capacity you learn from today. So the home garden intervention is aimed at assessing or, imp or improving the access of households to get these nutritious food groups. So while we train them um, and educate them on the benefits of eating diverse food groups and diverse um, crops, vegetables and fruits and the likes, you also, um, we also have to assess barriers and support behavior change. So the, that's the purpose of the home garden for nutrition. When we provide, help them to grow their own gardens within the household, they do not really have to get or, or, or move far away to markets very far to get these food groups. That's where it addresses um, physical access. And they also do not, um, the, it's not very expensive. It's not actually expensive to do. You're growing naturally. So they, that also helps to address the barrier of um, economic access. So I would now give way to our speaker, I mean, the person of Madam Hadiza, um, Hadiza Ayaro. She's the business development manager for East West Seed in Nigeria. So she will be handling the training today and then she'll be taking us through the basics for um, um, implementing the home garden intervention. Thank you. Good morning once again. Good morning. I've earlier on been introduced as Hadiz Ayara. I work for East West State International, and I'll give you a brief about the company before we go into the training proper. Uh, I serve as the capacity of the business development manager. It means all activities of East West State International in Nigeria, commercial activities I'm in charge. Uh, a brief about East West Seed. East West Seed International is a tropical vegetable seed company. We operate in over 60 countries in the world. Uh, we have worked with millions of farmers across the world. So when it comes to vegetable, we are experts in that field. And if you check your seed, asset to seed index for the past six years, internationally or would I say globally, we are ranked as number one. And uh, the owner of the company, that's Simon Groot, was given the highest kind of price you can imagine in the agricultural sector. That's the food price win for 2019, went to East West Seed and founder. So that apart, uh, coming back to what we will be doing today, we will be taking you through a series of trainings so that you have basic concepts in terms of growing home vegetables. It's split into sessions, but then I think, you know, if you're in school, you start with maths because the brain is still fresh, right? So we'll start with the hard part. What do I mean the hard part? Most of us probably must not have studied agric. 
but you might have your basic elementaries. But if you go that deep to managing pests, managing diseases, sometimes it's difficult. You don't even know what chemical to put. You don't even know the insect itself, not to talk of diagnosing to know whatever you need to take action on. So I will leave the details on home gardening much more later, very close to when we'll be going to the field. And I think I'm here with my colleagues, Abdul is here. Abdul serves at the capacity of the PDS, that's product development support, more of screening varieties before it gets to the uh, commercial arm. So uh, I have a lot on my deck, so I had to bring him in so that he can, I can leave some parts to him. While he's taking it, I can attend to some other things. So this morning, you can go to the next slide, we'll give you some basic concepts about inputs you need before you go into the field. Having the home gardening is not so different from having a commercial farm. The only difference is what? You scale it down. Another difference is, in a commercial farm, you wouldn't want to deal with all sorts of vegetables, starting from eggplants to cabbage to lettuce to carrots. You just want to maybe specialize in tomato. You want to do sweet corn because you're talking of volumes. You don't want what? Complexity. But in a typical home gardening, you see you have four, five, six, ten different vegetables because it's just for the household. You just might need one line of cabbage, one line of tomato, one line of onion, so that you have a little bit more of everything. Sorry, we all understand English, isn't it? And we all understand Hausa, right? Yes. Like the Hausas will say the Faduka, all. Koba Akaba. Some people will tell you, I don't want to eat rice, I don't want to eat beans, but I want to eat rice and beans. So for the home gardening, it's good you have almost everything. And we actually tried a research, or we've done, we've had experience in home gardening in Uganda, in Myanmar, in some other countries, and it's easier for us to borrow a leaf. And what do I mean? We have clearly seen that it's not very economical to just stick to one or two crops for home gardening. Minimum, you should have at least six, minimum, so that you should be able to have a cross from one food class to another. And then it's also very good that you don't just put what will get matured maybe in 60 days. Everything gets matured in 80 days. It means you're left with so many things to eat at the same time. I hope we get it. So it's such that some mature at 50 days. It means today you have tomato, tomorrow you have pepper, next tomorrow you have garden egg or something. So every day you keep on collecting to feed your family wheat, right? We're going to talk a little bit around land clearing, plowing, making beds, sowing, cultural management practices, management of pests and diseases as well as the design. The design will now go linked with the home gardening I had earlier on um, mentioned. So please we need to like open our eyes, senses, we have to be very alert from today until the day that we finish what? The home gardening project or what have you. Thank you very much. Any question? Question? No question. No question. Okay. Perfect. Abdul. Good morning, all. Yeah, like uh, I deservedly said, uh, my name is Abdurrahman Abdurrahim. I work as uh, product development support for East West Seed International in Nigeria. So, what we'll be trying to do today is just to take you around all these contents, which I believe we've, one way or the other, we are into farming. So, discussing about the inputs, land clearing, plowing making of the bed, sowing, management and uh, pra management practices, pest and disease controls, and the design, which is the layout. So the first one is the input. Please, I want the class to be an interactive class where that is how we get to know exactly why we are here. Because I shouldn't be the one talking, 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 talking. Yeah, and if there is anything you don't understand, please, you can equally call me back and I can explain again. Yeah, please, the next slide. Yeah, we can see that the inputs, uh, we don't really talk about the inputs here on the slide, but the inputs, we all know the inputs are the things that are needed in planting. What are the materials we need to plant? Inputs, can someone tell me one input? Good. Land, 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 land. Yes, it's, it is. Seed, yes, the first machinery is here. 
fertilizer he said it yeah good that means we are in the right place i believe i'm not talking to layman here so impute you said the seed fertilizers chemicals which is the herbicide and uh so the seed uh is what we are looking at here the seed is what we are we have to know is vegetable seed, right? Because we are looking at the hygiene, like Mr. Mohammed said, is the hygiene part of which is the vegetable. So the other one is the land clearing. The land clearing, we all know that clearing the land, we can't just go to the farm or uh, behind our backyard, just plant haphazardly without any preparation being done. Because you need to be, you will be competing with your weeds and trees. But you need to kill and clear your uh, your farm, your garden farm. Or rather, for us, we can't just go to the home, our houses, sleep without being preparing our beds. So we need to clear the land. Clearing of the land simply means uh, removing the obstacles, be it a stone, be it a bottle, be it a, a pebbles that will uh, we, uh, we, uh, we not enable our um, seeds to germinate. So the other one is plowing. Plowing simply means the thinning of turning of the soil. We can, since it's not, don't mind the pictures. Let's just narrow our minds to the backyard because this is a field which you can also use a machinery as well in your backyard. It depends on the size, but for our partnership, we always get our partners to be on 10 by 10 meters, which is 100 square meter. Do we all know what 100 square meter means? Yeah. Yeah, 10 by 10. Okay. Yes. So for easy management, like what Adiza rightly said, she said uh, you should have equal, you should have all plants, not one. Probably you are planting on uh, okra, you are planting papaya. No, you should have papaya, okra, tomato, pepper carrot so as to have all six or seven different crops and for for we all know that all these crops don't have a maturity date like for instance tomato is 65 days pepper takes 65 days lettuce 30 days from transplanting so we all know that so we should we should have it should be like a staggered planting so you should have every of your plants to be harvested okay for instance today i want to eat lettuce you have to plan ahead when do you want to have your lettuce and your tomato so you should know the gestation period like the maturity days maturity time for each crops is that understood if you can go through it's turning or loosening the topsoil before planting on the soil. This process helps turning over the optimal soil. That's as if you're turning the soil. Because when you plant on an hard pan, before the root, the root of the plant, before it penetrates the soil, it takes it difficult, it will struggle. The root will struggle, but when it is soft, it will be easier for the root to germinate and to penetrate down so that it can get the nutrients you are talking of. But if the soil is hard for the root to penetrate the soil, it will be difficult. So it will, and it will make the plant tough to struggle. To struggle. It's just as if you, you, are, you are in this class, you are having food here, and another food is here, and you are seated. And the food is here. How would you get here? You need to stand up. But the food is here, you can easily pick. It's just like that. The root will easily penetrate for it to absorb the nutrients. In That is what my, my Ogaya is saying. For the root to pick nutrients. So please, the next slide. I hope you understand this concept. So we need to, let's be thinking beyond this class. Yeah, the next one is making bed or ridges. Making bed depends on when, what time. Bed is simply the place where you'll be transplanting your seeds or ridges. We all know what ridges, kunya or komi. Am I making sense here? Yeah? Good. So if it depends on the season, 
because there are two seasons we have the wet and the dry season is that not so the wet season is when raining season while the dry season is when there is no rain during the raining season when you are making your bed you make it a little bit high not sunken not the comey that we know so this is for dry season if you can see this side sorry this side it will enable the water to stay is because it's dry season do you understand it will, when you make a bank by the ridges so that it will conserve water because it's dry season but raining season you are not making a bed you are not making a basin you are making a ridge, a high ridges where the water will not be staying on the ridge so the next one is sowing sowing we all mean, what sowing simply means is planting yeah. mushuka so and these crops we are handling they are vegetables and they are very very vital and essential crops they are delicate to handle you take you take care of them as if you are taking care of your baby there are stages for for we all know that we have nursery school some will even start crutch pre nursery nursery primary one up to primary university so so also in vegetables we have the nursery from the nursery you transplant and there are two types of nursery you will all see that on the field we have the plastic sewing where you sew in the plastic a tray you all see that later in the day you plant on the tray after it, it has gotten to a mature uh, a stage where you transplant it's also crop wise some crops takes eight days some takes 25 some takes 30 days to 45 days for instance for cucumber and watermelon is just eight days for you to transplant for tomato cabbage and uh, uh, pepper pepper even take longer days than tomatoes and cabbage but for tomato tomato takes to and from 14 days depending on the weather if the weather is favorable you can transplant your tomato at 14 days but if the weather is not favorable favorable simply means uh, plants usually grow faster rapidly during the hot weather the season we are now because the weather is hot so they easily they easily grow very well for instance we all know during the amatan we don't really feed or is it only me that do that are you have you ever observed that so also plants plants too don't don't grow faster during the cold season you can plant the watermelon i said it takes eight days when you plant it during that time even before it germinates it will take a longer time if we not talk of transplanting so please get it right i hope i'm not confusing you people here you are getting it right so transplanting depends on the crop and the weather so that is for seedling trees i said there are two types of nursery we have the ground nursery and the seedling tree you raise in the nursery in the nursery house you create a house where you raise your seedlings then before you transplant and why our farmers here what they do is that some raise it on the ground when you dig from the ground you now go and transplant so those are two methods of sowing and there are some that doesn't need nursery like the watermelon you can plant directly or the cucumber you can plant directly or you plant in the nursery the reason of this nursery is because we can take we should take care of it our plant that is our plant before we transplant so sowing i think we are done with sowing we are good are we okay with sowing yes. good next slide please
Okay, so the management practices. When they say management practices, it's, it involves all the processes. Even from sewing, it's a management practices. When you get it wrong from sewing, that's all. You won't get anything. But just get it right at your sewing, then you will. the rest can follow suit. So you can see the management practices, these practices include irrigation, weeding, pruning, trellising, mulching, fertilizer application, pest and disease control, and harvesting. All these processes are management practices. What you can do to make you have a good harvest. All these are what we call in Hausa double room noma. So who can tell me what irrigation means? I will explain it one after the other. Who can tell me what irrigation means? Please, let's clap for him. Of uh, artificial application of water to the plant. Be it any season, it can be raining season, it can be dry season. Just the process of artificial application of water to our plants. Yes. That is what irrigation is all about. And for the irrigation, we have different methods of irrigation. I don't want us to go too deep for our level. For let me just briefly talk about it. This you can see some lines, black black lines. Is that not so? Good. The lines are method of irrigation, which we call drip irrigation. The drip irrigation is just a process of applying water directly to the plants because each drip has a nipple where water drips out directly to the plant. This will conserve your water. Unlike what we normally see in our farmer's field here, where they will just open, carry pump to their river, open the water, and it's also a process yeah. of irrigation. I'm just trying to let you know. You might be seeing this that, how, how does that happen? But you can see a drip. It's just like the normal drip. The lines we take from the hospital. The way it drips, that's how this water is being dripped to each and it will be going directly to the soil, to the root zone of each plant. Instead of wasting resources, you're wasting your water from the dam, taking it. But in this place, it's very, it's a water efficiency. Is high. The water efficiency is high in this. What do I mean by water efficiency? The utilization of water by the plant is very, very high. The plant will make use of that water that it needs. The water is not going other places. It's just particular to that plant. But it is method of applying water to the plant. We have also sprinkler, the one that does like a rain. Sprinkler. It's also a method of applying water. So you now check your, this irrigation, before you can think of irrigation, you need to check your water. Yeah. If you have a, enough water source like the river one, or dam, or dam you can be thinking of maybe just flooding because you know the water is still there, the water cannot finish. But when, in the case where that your water is not that much, you can use irrigation, in drip irrigation. Or where in a place that you don't have that dam, you just have a river, you can have your watering can. It's also a method. So that you will not go back and say, Abdul said, without that uh, drip irrigation, without uh, flooding irrigation, you can irrigate. You can also use your watering can. So also you can use your uh, hose still. Yes. You can use it to 
one after the other yeah. on the plants. So they are all methods of irrigation. In as much your plant is not suffering. They are getting enough water. That is what we just want. And we all know that if plants, can we stay without drinking water? No. So also the plant, because the plants are all living things. They also need water, they also need food. So the next one is weeding. What weeding simply means is removing of unwanted grasses. So weed cannot, it might not be, it might not be grass. It might be a crop. You plant your tomato and you're having okra there. You remove that okra because that okra is weed. You didn't plant it and you don't want it on that particular place. So we all understood what uh, weeding is. Yes. Removing of unwanted grass. grass. Unwanted plants, not grass. Because even the, grass the crop is also a plant. Mm. So the next one is pruning. Pruning, this one is high tech a little bit. But I need to put it so that for us to have a good yield. Because when you're having your home gardening, for instance, I have five plants of tomatoes. You are, uh, Oga Mohamed also have five plants of tomato. I pruned mine. He didn't prune his. What I will have in terms of big tomato will be different from his. His own might be maybe much fruit, but in terms of sizes, Mine will be bigger because I pruned. I will tell you the, mean, the meaning of pruning. Pruning simply means removing the excess vegetation, excess leaf. We all know that. It's just probably the English or the term that is making us to. Like, for instance, mangoes. You will see some people cutting, cutting the edges. Some flowers, you will see they are reducing the side for it to what to regenerate so it depends on the aim and objective of your pruning for me if i prune my tomatoes you can see these tomatoes look at these tomatoes very clean despite i pruned but it's still looking bushy and because of the pruning it helps you can see if had it been I didn't prune, you wouldn't have been seeing those tomatoes. It will be bushy. And it helps the fruit to be big. That is what pruning does. A lot of advantages, a lot of things pruning does to plant. It depends on what your, your aim and objective of that pruning. Good. So you understand what pruning is now? Good. So the next one is trellising. Trellising simply means. Can I make a comment there? Okay. Um, no. Yeah. Generally, for pruning, you don't advise farmers that are not experienced to do pruning. Pruning, sure. On one condition, we advise you to do pruning when it's a diseased condition, condition. that you don't want it to spread. So, for the purpose of this class, no pruning except. If you see a disease plant, we'll be going to the field much later. I will demonstrate that. So pruning is a little bit more advanced. Advanced, sure. Doing greenhouse farming. But for outdoors, we don't advise to do pruning. Except if you've seen a disease leaf. Okay. That if you don't remove, it will spread. Spread, sure. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you, ma. Yeah, the next one is uh, trellising. Trellising simply means... Taking, tying your plant across, or you are giving a support, not probably tying up, just giving a support to your plant. Just, it's just a simple definition. Giving support to your plant for it not to lodge, for it not to fall down. Like this tomato, you can see it's raining season, and you can still see it's standing and as tall as this tomato is not touching ground why because i gave it support so is it uh, is it 
lesson, as you said. Yeah. Is it uh, the one that we capable in that of planting of the Yes. That is true. It gives it what? Support. That is taking. We call it taking. So, it, okay. So, as you mean, um, yes, you want to promote kids. Yeah. Practices. Yeah. And you have someone that is that interested in gardens. Yeah. But it's very busy. Mm. Is Pilistin, we know it's going to have big support. Sure, sure. But is, is Pilistin that? Seen as important. Ah, uh, for sure, it it is is nest. Yeah, it it is. It is if you want to have a good yield, because everything boils down to yield. And as, because okay, for instance, you have a plant upright. It's not lodging down. It's not on the ground. Number one, what you give, because if it touches the ground, there are a lot of soil borne diseases in the soil. As soon as it touches your plants, you will see some of our tomatoes will be rotting. Why? It's because they are touching the ground and water is coming up. As well, you can still get away with it during the dry season. But it's better. It's better when you stick. You will all see that on the farm. Anything you are not taking is on the ground. For even for easy management, you want to spray, you want to maybe apply chemicals for maybe insecticide, uh, disease, you want to control some fungi diseases, some bacterial diseases. For you to even apply on the ground, it's a difficult thing. But while it's standing like this, you can easily do all operations easily and move but when it's on the ground even you'll be stamping on it wastage of your fruits so it's better if you can stick yeah. so i don't want to take much of our time because we're still going to so the next one is mulching mulching simply means uh covering the topsoil yeah. when you said mulching covering the topsoil. Like for instance, here, when you cover the soil, number one, what mulching does is it helps in preserving moisture. It also, hel it also helps to suppress weed germination. When you've covered your soil, definitely the weeds are not, and because sun helps in germination. This, in the, the seeds is not seeing the soil. So definitely no germination will occur. When you mulch very well, you will see everything on the farm. So don't let me take much of your time. Just, it's just a means of covering. You can use it to conserve water. Where there is, like, the weather is hot now. Anytime you apply the water now, you will see it's dried. But when you have mulch, we have plastic mulch and organic mulch. Organic mulch is when you use a, like a rice straw to cover the topsoil to conserve uh, water and to also suppress its weed. Good. Let's continue. Fertilizer. We all know what fertilizer means. Application. We all know what it means. Food. Because the plant needs food. What is their food? Is the fertilizer. The sun is also their food. The, the water, the food, the nutrient is what they need to grow. What is the essence of fertilizer is what? For it to grow. And the fertilizer is of how many types? Two. Two. What and what? Urea. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you are right. <laughs> but, but, but urea is types. Organic and inorganic. The inorganic. Organic is the what? The natural the natural sources, be it the manure. No, not chemical. We are talking of natural. natural okay. Poultry, cow dung, uh, the small ruminants. Yeah. Even your plant, the normal plant you see, is also a manure. We have the green manure, yeah. but don't let me go there. 
<laughs> that way. So the normal one you know is the cow dung and the poultry yes. droppings. So we have the inorganic, which is the urea, MPK, MOP, everything, all the things you can think of, all the fertilizer you can think of is inorganic because they are synthetic. They are man-made. The next one is our pest and disease control. Yeah, pest and disease control is the main challenge our farmer face. Because you need to identify the pest. And you need to understand how does this plant grow. When they say the plant is LD, how does it look like? And on LD plant, how does it look like? Before you can control. So for sure, we we'll, we'll also I will I'll see, you'll see some some slides. You can see this tomato, very LD. Look at the tomato; it's very LD. But when you see a diseased plant, you don't need any mag magician or any physician to tell you that this plant is LD. We all know fresh and green. But when you see a a, a, a plant that is looking yellowish you know that yes something is wrong yeah. probably uh, nutrient deficiency probably in pests probably diseases so we all know the concept green plants are healthy plant except for some um, crops uh, some plants that are maybe yellow in nature and uh, <laughs> so don't say abdurahim said all plants are green <laughs> so you can less the control we all know what control is the pesticide, what you use in controlling them. The control is a, uh, we can use one pesticide or instead uh, uh, to eliminate the disease and pest. There are different methods, you will see it along. And harvesting, harvesting simply means what? When your crop has attained physiological maturity, when they are big, when they are, it's not big, you might, you might see a big mango, but it's not ripe. Will you say it has attained uh, physiological maturity? No, because it's not ripe. And we all know what implication of eating unripe mango. You know what it can cause to do damage, or unripe fruit, or unripe anything. You can't eat this tomato as it is, because it has no, but it's big. But you know that, yes, for sure it's not ripe. Because can you make soup with this kind of tomato? No. So when a fruit has attained its physiological uh, maturity, then you can harvest. And it also varies to crops. You see some crops green and it's mature. Yeah, yeah. And it's as attained, the, you can harvest. And some, it changes color. Like tomato, you we all know the color of tomato. And there are some crops which will turn yellow. When some color, when it's, uh, the color changes, then you know that yes, it's... And some, it's not the, it's not the physiological, that is why I said physiological maturity. Because you might see a uh, sun scout. Yes. Sun will just make the fruit to ripe. Yes. You, can you say it's matured? It's ready for harvest? No. That is sun scout. We will not eat that. So that is why I main mention of physiological maturity. Next slide, please. Yeah, these are pest and disease control. Common pests and disease of vegetable. You can see broad mites, white flies, fruit worms, beet army worm, onion trips, aphids, trips, and beetle. We can't be going crop wise. Because if we are to go crop wise, maybe for the whole one week, we might more than we will be here. Because when I was in school too, uh, this disease is a complex place for me. But well, I thank God for my boss, which he took us through and <laughs> I was able to understand. But the symptoms, you see some symptoms of uh, this, all these insects causes diseases. They are pests that causes, they are insects that causes diseases. Like for instance, uh, this one does not cause disease, the B2. What it does is it peck on the leaf of your plant. It makes O on the leaf of, especially okra. 
So it doesn't cause diseases. Trips causes diseases. Aphids causes diseases. White flies causes diseases. So this, you can see all these insects, you can see it's in one or two plants, all the vegetable plants. Uh, you can see all these trips, you can see in onions, you can see in, uh, in, in cucumber, you can see in uh, okra, you can, so it's peculiar to vegetables. That is why I listed this. But if you are to be talking on crop-wise, well, maybe the rest of this year will be here. So next slide, please. So we'll discuss on how to identify, you can see. Who can tell me what's wrong with this plant? Okay. Yeah, it's dirty. <laughs> it's, da it's not getting, it's damaged already. <laughs> when you go to the market, can you buy this cabbage? No. What? Oh, I've said it, I wanted asking. What crop is this? Malama, what crop is this? Cabbage. Are you sure? Yes. Madam Elin, are you sure it's not mango? <laughs> <laughs> So don't mind me, it's cabbage. Yeah, so you can see. Uh, please, can you tell us what's, what's happening? What makes it damage? You can see the hose. Yes. This is not normal. Yes, yeah, the maggots are there. If you can, it be it's just the maggots are here. So they peck on the, the leaves. So it's making it abnormal. Any abnormality is diseased or pest. It's insects that causes the disease. Okay. Do you get it? Yeah. This one is green, but you can see it's full. The Baba said it's like this. It's like this. <laughs> you know that something is wrong. Yes. It's not the normal leaf. You can see from these onions too. Look at. Look at the leaves. It's full it's too. Onion. It's inside the onion leaf. So, so this one now, you can see that it's calling up. It doesn't mean that. It's at the top of this? No, it's down. The down, yeah. The insect, not the disease. The insect, yes. 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 The insect at the top. Yeah. See the bad guy, okra. B2. You can see the holes. It has finished. This reduces the rate of photosynthesis. It reduces the rate of photosynthesis. Yes. So, by the by so doing, the plant will not be able to trap food from the sun. This is because it's the leaves that helps the plant to tap food from the sun to complete photosynthesis. But this one is so the media, any sun coming. Going down is not from the leaf, okay. direct to the ground. It's just so you can see the effect of B2 on. It's not that it's causing disease, though, it's not causing disease, but it has reduced the rate of photosynthesis for this particular plant. Am I making sense? So the next one is broad mite. You can see how it's also folded, yes. it's, and this is pepper. Mites generally are underneath. They always go under the plant and suck the sap of the leaf. Under the leaf. You can see. Look at the leaves. They are not. They curl downward. But the mite is under. It's under. So it's not that's not like a general principle. It's not general principle, you understand. You might see some on the on the plant, on the leaf still call up. And you see some, when they, it's just like, when you have uh, this tissue, there is something underneath, definitely it will shrink up, down rather, like this, instead of, and there are some that will suck the, the hope that will make it. So next place. So you can see different management control. This is how we can control all the insects we've seen. How can we control them? I told you we don't use one method. All this method can be classified as IPM. 
all these five methods of controlling of management are under IPM. What IPM simply means integrated pest management. That's what it means. Integrated pest management. Combining all the possible means to control diseases, pest and disease in your on your plant. Integrated simply means in our English, integrating all the possible all the possible means you can employ to make you have good control of the pest and disease on your plant. So the first one is host plant resistance. What old plant resistance simply means is planting the planting a variety that is resistant to that particular diseases. No, not even the weather. Diseases. Like for instance, in your in your soil, you have bacterial weeds. It's a disease caused by bacteria. You now have a tomato or a crop that is resistant to it. You know, definitely that bacteria is present in the soil, but your plant is resistant to that bacteria. So definitely it will not be caught up with that bacteria. But when you have a, a crop which like tomato, pepper, that they are susceptible to that bacteria, that they can easily catch that bacteria with, definitely they will pick it up and it, your field will be damaged completely. Um, maybe, for instance, you want to plant tomato on that particular plot. You should be thinking of variety that is resistant to that bacteria root. For instance, you don't have variety that is resistant to that bacteria root, then you change your crop. Probably you plant maize. Because maize, the uh, bacteria root does not affect maize. But does that mean that the bacteria root will go away? Yes. It's just as if, okay, for instance, you are in this room, your best food. Okay, you don't like eating masa. Today, they bring masa. Tomorrow, masa. Next tomorrow, masa. Four days, masa. What will you do? You leave because you don't want to die. So that is what will happen. So you can see. So that is uh, host plant resistance. Because before a disease, disease is like a triangle. Before a disease can occur, it's like a triangle, like this. We have the host plants. If the host plant is here, plant, we have the environment. Don't mind my writing, please. And we have the what? The, uh, the host, I mean, the, this thing, the virulent. That is the disease itself. We have the plant, the environment, the disease. If these three conditions are met, definitely this is disease. To eliminate this, remove this. If you remove this, can this plant and environment bring disease? No. If these three uh, conditions are not here, you won't have disease. But for instance, the virulent is there. The environment is not is not favorable. This, this, this is the disease. Oh. This is the host uh, vector that carries the disease. This is the disease itself. We have the plant. That is the tomato. For instance, for bacterial roots. We don't have the good environment. The environment is hot. Nothing like bacterial roots. It will not occur. For instance, the plant is not there. What I explained. We have the environment. You have your maize, and this is your bacterial root. Will this bacterial root affect your plant? Because no plant. Because this is a disease triangle. When you hear disease triangle, this is what we call disease triangle. If one is not, if you want to eliminate your, your disease, kill one. That disease will not occur. Do you understand it? Yes. So please let's move further because of. Uh, so the physical control. Physical control simply means. The method of you controlling the pest and disease physically. Physically simply means you see the beetle on your, on, your, on your okra. 
you unpick it. You remove it. That is what physical control. The way you can easily attack the, uh, the, uh, the pest, the insect, ASAP is what we call physical control. The ant, maybe you go there, you remove. And or any plant that is affected, you, you pick and burn. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Please, if I'm going too fast or anything, you can. Okay, good. The cultural control. Cultural control is what? By using means of in a culturally way to control the insects. Cultural control is by crop rotation. Example of cultural control. By rotating crop. For instance, you have tuta this year. You, now pl you planted tomato, tuta affected your plants. You plant, will you plant tomato next year again? No. You will want to plant maybe maize that tuta does not affect, like this triangle. You understand? So that is, you will rotate. That is how you rotate, both for diseases and pests. The next one is biological control. Biological control is like using another method to control our pests. Like for instance, you have a, what's it called? Spider to pick your insects. Like you use a plant like sunflower to attract your insects. You set a trap. Let's say you have you all know sunflower. That yellow they use for not they can use it for fencing. They can use it for beautifying. They use it for oil too. When you plant it around your farm, it's yellow, and you know these insects are light sensitive. They always see yellow, yellow. They always move direction to that yellow plant. Thereby, what leaving your crop your plant, your vegetable, and uh, not touching it. You understand? Yeah. In that way you have your uh, sunflower, I'm just using that sunflower as one example for us to see. You have your trap there to trap those insects. You can now use that yellow sunflower to kill the insects that affect your plant. As well, you can use, like we use a... Uh, Cat and rats. If we have rats in our house, we, we introduce what? We introduce cats to finish the rats. That is a biological control. So the next one is, after, after all this method, let's assume you use host resistance, you don't achieve the, the aim, the, the, the disease is still occurring. You use physical method, the pest, the insect is still disturbing you. You use cultural method, it's still disturbing you. You use biological method, it's still disturbing you. The last resort, the last option is chemical. Because it will give you the quick action. And when you see that chemical is working for you, probably you use one particular chemical that works for you today. Please don't go back to it again. Because the insects too, they are wise. They will develop resistance. And by doing so, they will multiply. You understand? So for instance, you use chemical A today, chemical A today. When next you want to apply chemical, don't apply that chemical A because chemicals are grouped. I don't want to go higher. Just use chemical B that you know that, yes, it can kill that, your insect pest. You understand? Then chemical B, C, then D. Then you now come back. After D, you now come back to maybe B, not even A again. God bless you. That is what I want to use. You confuse. You confuse. When it's coming, you say, ah, let me, maybe it has developed resistance to uh, chemical A. You now use chemical C. Definitely, ah, Kai, this guy won't get me. You go wrong. You understand? That is how to interchange chemical. Do you get it? You can see its layout. 
layout, you can see the way this person did his layout. Very lovely. You can easily walk. You can see the way he raised his bed. I believe this raining season. That is why he raised the bed like this. Without making any banks at the edges. No any banks. If rain should fall here, water will not be staying on this place. The water will, will fall down. You can see the layout. You can easily walk. You make your feet very neat. This is, he has a blocks of plant. You can do it like probably you have your tomato here, your papaya, your okra, your pepper. Or you can do it on a row wise. So also you can do it this way. You have each line differently. This is lettuce, cabbage, okra, like that. So it depends on what you want to see or how you want it to beautify your environment. Do we all know that even the home gardening, home gardening beautifies our environment? Because the green. So you can see, good harvest. Please, question. I want question. To tell me that you really understood what we have been discussing, or what we've been discussing because it's an interactive class. Have a question before the OK, so, all right. But then the hectare, okay. is there a particular size of land that should be used for this um, garden? Home garden, I said for our partnership, we use a 10 by 10, which what? is 100 square meter. Yeah. Yeah, you advise that or you yeah. Still limit to by yeah, you can still go for that depending on how good you are at that. And yeah, and the label. The home gardening is a normal, it's just yourself and your family. Okay. Understood. Yeah. So there's no specific? No specific, but just in a limit uh, area so that which you can easily control. Okay. When it's when you feel oh, okay, you've you've satisfied with what you are producing, okay. you can feed your family and your neighbors. You can have it. Then you can escalate. Because from home gardening, I see some can expand to commercial farming. Yes. yes. So that is just it. So no any limitation to size, but for sure it's better you start small. It's not how big, but how well. So welcome back. To this session. How was the other session? It was fine. Sure? So we're going to have professors of what? Of pest and disease management in this yeah. class. Great. So we want to concentrate a bit now on the design of the home gardening. What should it look like? What is the minimum space you use for doing your home gardening? We tried, like this one, it's, it's more of a slide we have used elsewhere and then we have made some recommendations. So for this one, we tried the 90 meter square, which can just be a nine meter by 10 meters. But I think for quick comprehension, we can go for a 10 by 10, or if the spaces are so small, we can just do a 10 by five. It all depends. It's, it's flexible. It's not cast on stone. So the first thing you need to do is to do your layout. Remember, he who does not plan will fail. Right? If you fail to plan, you have planned your failure. So it's very important that you should know that you don't just wake up in the morning, you just want to go and start this home garden. No. I expect each of you to have a notebook where you can keep your records because that's one, one thing you should teach the farmers. You need to keep record. It might not be complex. Even the farmers thereafter, tell them to keep their record. And sometimes when you have this record, it's easier for you to tell another person, this is what I did. And it will also help him to know, okay, this person is up to date with his record. So in your record book, you're going to have your layout. And then on the layout, you have maybe just a sketch. I'll show you a sketch. A sketch of your measurement. The fields might not be a perfect square or rectangle but then you have to fashion it to what you want you can cut off the edges or you can decide to use it like that but you need to have an idea of how big your space is and what you're going to plan in terms of is it two ridges one ridge two things on the same ridge 
walkways of course you need to plan it like abdul was showing if you have some of those walking spaces then it's easier for you to do your operations but once you just mumble up everything even when there is pest and disease it's difficult for you to get in there to do what to do the control so you have your crop layout the next thing you do you have to like make a list of what you want to grow and it applies to the farmers as well thereafter let them select what they feel they can consume because don't forget we're not just planting for somebody else to eat but then they are planting so that they can eat it so they should plant what they are happy to eat isn't it you discover today i want to eat rice tomorrow is not rice it's amala the next day i want to eat what maybe moi moi or something so let them pick whatever they feel they are comfortable with. And then you certainly will need a word, a shed schedule. When you need to plant, when you need to do the transplant, of course, some of these things already have an indication of days. For example, if you want to plant um, um, cabbage, you want to plant lettuce, you want to plant uh, maybe cucumber, you know the number of days it should stay in the nursery. And then you need to know, okay, today I'm planting, in the next two weeks, I'm going to do the transplant. And then in between the planting and the transplant, it means you have to get set your field. Yes. But not to just wake up overnight. Oh, 14 days. I'm supposed to do the transplant. And then the field is not yet ready. So that is why we really need to have what? A schedule. You know when to do what operation. Sometimes we do some preventive spraying. Even when you don't see insect, whether you don't maybe see any disease manifestation. For example, in the wet season, whether you see fungal disease or you don't see, you still have to do preventive. Because if you are waiting to see the symptoms, sometimes it gets way out of hand. So it's extremely important that you have a schedule to know, okay, maybe after every two weeks I need to do my fungicide application. Maybe after every other rain, I need to do my fungicide operation by spray. So you really need to weigh some of these things. Some of the slides I'm going to flip through. So this is just a typical layout of what the home gardening should be. It might not be as sophisticated as this, uh, but then at least you need to know, okay, this is where I'm putting A, B, C, D. So it all depends. One of the sessions you might just add market for where you're going to raise your nursery. It could be everything in the same place. So you say, okay, this is my nursery, and then this is where I want to have the permanent side. But not just to go into the field, you don't even know where your nursery is, where is the permanent field, and then you're up to start home gardening. So it needs proper planning. And of course, if you do a proper planning, it means the people that are learning from you will learn the good things. But if we have problem at your own level, then it means the people copying from you will copy the wrong thing, right? So we really need to make it very organized. Even if they don't do it, or don't, even if they don't do it as organized as your own, no problem. But you are the first pioneers. We expect that you do it at least to a certain level. You know one thing with people is if you teach somebody 10 things, he can just go away with five things and learn. Then now narrow it down. If you teach him five things, it's even difficult to do those five things. He might just pick two or three and go. So that is why your own demonstrations, where you're going to manage, has to come with all. It should be what? It should be full auction. Come, follow, come. Everything should be there. And let the the beneficiaries say, okay, I want to do this, I want to do this. So let's do it as good as possible so that when people are copying, they copy the good things at the end of the day. Yeah, this is more detailed like, okay, this week I'll do just a crop planning. It might not be as sophisticated as this, but at least you have something that you will follow. For example, when you're going to plant, this, these are different crops in a home gardening. Ours might not be this much. For example, if we have four or five, you should know that, okay, fine, this is the first crop, this is the second crop. Because you can plant on the same day, but the transplanting days are different. So right from day one, you should have a clue of when to plant, when to transplant, when to fertilize, when to spray, when to mulch, when to stake, and things like that. But if you say, you, okay, you came for a training, and day after the training, you don't have a book, and you feel you can go and implement, I tell you, that is the beginning of your failure because this thing serves as a reminder. For example, the field staff, we have the technical guys. From day one, they have an idea when is their field day because it's programmed. And then you walk backwards and say, okay, I'm planning today to plant. After two weeks, I do the transplant. 
in the third week I need to spray and things like that. So there should be some kind of prediction. It might not be perfect, but it serves as a guide. And then if you have an operation in the next one or two days, it means probably you have to already procure your chemical or procure your fertilizer, not to just pick up your book in the morning. You need to go to the field and you discover maybe it's, uh, it's a holiday or it's, it's, it's a market day or a situation where you cannot even get those chemicals or you have traveled all the way to the field. It's only when you go to the field, you open your book and you discover this is a spraying day today or it's a fertilization day. So you really need a guide that to help you work on the field. So these are just beds. It could serve as a nursery bed, it could serve as the permanent site, it all depends. I'm happy we're going into the field today. So you will see a lot of what? Things that you could copy or things that can like open your perspective or give you some inspiration and can also show you that these things are possible. They are not just mere hearsay, right? So these are um, possibilities of what you should be doing. I remember what Abdul said, usually as a rule of the term, in the wet season, you try to get raised beds. It might not be too high, right? But then it's advisable to avoid what? Water logging or flooding and things like that. But in the dry season, like most of what we see with the local farmers, they try to make what? Some kind of basins. But even that one is completely wrong because they plant inside the basin. What we do is we have shallow raised beds and then you don't always allow the plants inside the water. Because what they do is they flood. And it's a lazy man's job. I want to flood and in the next five, six days, I don't water. Or sometimes farmers will ask me, how many times should I water? And then you ask the person, I ask, well, how many times do you eat in a day? Two or three times. And then you stop these plants for almost five days without water. And then one thing is, I used to say, what you logically do is to overfeed it. Sometimes they get drawn inside that water. Sometimes it gives room for what? Diseases. I used to say it's just like a baby now. The mother will leave her in her nappies. Subsequently, you discover she has nappy rashes. Right? So it's always good to give the plant exactly what it can eat. If I calculate, for example, maybe he can finish two modules of rice in one week. Right? And I decide, okay, every day I'm going to cook two, two cups for him and give him logically he can finish it but if i say now i want to cook the two moodles and i keep for him and say oh yeah eat will he finish it mm -hmm. he will eat what he can eat today and for the next five days mm -hmm. the food he doesn't have fridge he doesn't have anything to warm it will it keep for five days that is exactly what the farmers do to the plants so in our home gardening get it straight we have to be watering little by little daily because if you overfeed the plant the plant can take it to a certain limit and the other ones will seep out. It's not like the water will wait for it for seven days. So there are some simple practices we need to correct. And it's the way you handle your own demo that they will see and copy. So the issue of having to flood and to now staff, flood and staff affects plants in its own way. Is that clear? Yes. Right. Okay, usually when we sow, uh, we'll see this in the field. You sow on trays. You can also have maybe sowing on crates, which is not common here. That I understand. But then you also have what? The direct sowing, maybe for lettuce, for cabbage, or some other things. But then again, we're going to demonstrate to you in the field, even when you're doing your ground nursery. In most cases, you discover that farmers sometimes broadcast. Okay. We don't advise that. Because there are a lot of operations that becomes so difficult with the broadcasting method. It's difficult to weed, it's difficult to administer fertilizer, and then sometimes you have a lot of competition because when I broadcast, it means every seed moves around at random. Some seed can even sit on top of the other one. And once it begins to germinate, they begin to shade each other and they begin to fight for what? Or compete for light, for water, for nutrients, for space, and what have you. So there are logical ways that we will be demonstrating to you in, on the field to see how you should do the sowing in the field, even if you don't have the seedling trays and crates or what have you for nursery preparation. I've told you I'll be doing a lot of jumping. These are just home gardenings of, of different types. Yeah. Uh, 
Okay, these are just maybe for you to see uh, challenges, which of course we should see, and of course at the end of the day we will come around in the field to hear, okay, fine, we have finished the demos. Remember, people are going to copy. And then we will also want to hear from you, and I'm sure Mohammed will be interested, what are the challenges? Because some of these challenges that you face, the farmers will still face. That's the beneficiaries at the end of the day. And then it's a time for reflection. Okay, how do we now mitigate some of these challenges, isn't it? So even as you carry on your duties, you should begin to think. Probably you discover the challenges of the women might be different from the ones of the men. Maybe the women will now say, on a certain day, oh, there is no small boy to help me carry the bucket to water. But for the man, he will just carry the bucket and he goes to water. So let us also bear in our minds that we should document some of those challenges so that we can also discuss to see how we can mitigate. So that when we're fashioning in maybe, or we, we, we are going to work with those beneficiaries, we know, okay, these are likely challenges. And if there's anything we can do to mitigate or to help, then that will help us. So let's look at some of those challenges for those that did the home gardening in other countries. Extremely what? The, the weather was really, really harsh on their home gardening. They had incidents of pests and diseases in terms of uh, management. They also had what? Uh, direct sowing of seeds. It, it, it came with some challenges because we might see this in the field where maybe they don't have the seedling tray, they have to do the ground nursery and things like that. Then also control over inputs. They don't really have a control. What do I mean? Remember these are remote areas where uh, maybe the guy is faced with uh, uh, a fungal attack. Yeah. Even if he knows it, maybe there is no place he can get it. Except maybe if he has to leave that community to travel out or to go out to pick it. So some of these people also encountered um, having challenges over input. Even in towns, knowing where to get it is yet another one. Even if you have the resources, you know what the problem is, but where can I get it? That is the question. So it has to do with issues around affordability, accessibility, and also what availability, right? So of course, you can see dogs and cats. These are what community. It's not like you have a far away farm where you don't have, some of us have pets around the house, even chicken, even uh, aguagua, abi. Yes. Some of them, if you're not careful, in fact, Farming community, if you are not careful, one day a cow will just go and finish the home garden. Goats, you know? So these are some of the challenges. And then, of course, if now we know these challenges, the question is we begin to mitigate it. So that we will not wake up overnight and what? Our farm is finished. It means you have to secure your home garden. That's just what this has gone to, to tell us. So some opportunities is what? Easy access to safe vegetable. It means when you do your home gardening, you're sure of what you're eating. At least it's not a case of you don't know how it was cultivated. Learning by doing is an opportunity, isn't it? Yes. For us to see and learn. Even beyond just you guys are going to step it down, even for your personal use. You, it's, it's, it's an advantage. Because now Sahel is sponsoring this at a cost. But then you now have the knowledge. Tomorrow Sahel will not say, give me back my knowledge. And then some of you will even want to step it to maybe a, a commercial level. It wouldn't just be at the level of, okay, I'm teaching. And don't forget, a teacher, as he keeps on teaching, he keeps on learning as well. Because there's nobody that knows it all. As you see a challenge, you try to address it and then you learn. And then you ask a lot of questions. So you can see what it is. I'm saying this because you are the people stepping it down. Mohammed will not be there. Abdul will not be there. I will not be there. But when you come and just do your own thing and go, the guys are not learning, right? Yeah. So you can see this is a typical example. So that if it's fertilizer application, you first of all demonstrate, right? And then when you give people to do, you have to monitor. Yeah. And then don't say, maybe if there are 50 or 30 or 20 or 5 people, don't say, ganaka, 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 oya kujekusa. Meaning, take your own, take your own, take your own, let's go and put, no. You will call one person, okay, take, show us. Like that, like that, everybody is learning, right? So you have to be uh, very good with your coordination so that you don't get it bad, right? Uh, okay, some of the goals of home gardening, 
Mohammed had mentioned earlier, but one it increases was family consumption for vegetable. And as a result of that, it will do what? It will increase nutrition in the family. Another one is what? Learn how to grow vegetable is a point of entry for women as they have control on the garden. You women, I'm happy you're here. That is not all men, 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 men. Because when you teach women to do the home gardening, they have control. If today she tells Megida na son she uh, yard long bean bean, she wants something, and the Megida does not have, what does she do? She goes to pluck. Or you na son chimi yanganye, maybe amaranthus, that is a spinach. Then a jin chimi yanganye. Uh, that's vegetable soup. She just goes behind her house and she prepares the vegetable soup. Maybe Megidama has gone to work. On returning back, uh -uh, he will just see vegetable soup ready, isn't it? Yeah. So I think it's very, very important that women are involved in this thing, even more than men. That's, that's my perspective. Well, I might be wrong, but please let us encourage as many women as possible because some of these backyard spaces are wasting. The man is hardly there at home to do anything. Some of these women don't even go out. They are there too far. So the point is, why don't we make them make use of these spaces, right? The last one there says it brings some cash to the family. That's extra vegetable if sold. So if the woman, at the end of the day, has enough space, what she can do at the end of the day is to upscale. And before she knows it, her friends women around will come and even buy from her because she cannot even finish whatever she's cultivating in her home gardening. Clear enough? The training. Yeah. And now we went into home gardening. So I'll give you also a specific scope for home gardening. Mm -hmm. um, she, she has mentioned some of them already. One, the criteria okay. to identify which we are using. You know, I said for this intervention, we're working with the E's and shoes. Exactly. Now, you already have activities you are doing. With, so it's not... It will not work to say every day go to the field. Yeah. So we'll see how to make it flexible. So the choose can come in here. Um, the groundwork with the household members, the choose will work it. The field work, that's where you come in. Okay. So that's why you're having this training. Oh, okay. Now, for the groundwork, the households, it's not all the communities that will get in there. Okay. One criteria is that they have access to water. It's, it's the goal, the objective for the intervention is so that households have access to nutritious food groups all year round. So if I teach you how to do it in dry season, uh, how can I teach you how to do it in the... Sorry, if I teach you how to do it in the wet season, remember it's falling. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's free water. Mm -hmm. But in the dry season, you don't have access to water. Mm -hmm. It's difficult to tell them to go and fresh water mm -hmm. and come back. And you will not fresh two gallons of water to, to go to go. <laughs> what you want to do. Because so, you are there to train them. Yeah. So to start at a small one, we are just starting. So mm -hmm. this is like a pilot, so to mm -hmm. say. And we can scale up from mm -hmm. lessons we're learning from this, yeah. this first year. Mm -hmm. So we're starting with houses that have access to water, both in communities, our both. and some of communities already have water. Okay. So we know we can do, we're planning two cycles for, for, for this year, so although it will run to next year to have two cycles. Mm -hmm. So one in the, rain, in the rain season and one in the dry season. Mm -hmm. So that's one. Secondly, on that criteria I can find the houses is that you should have a woman in the household within the age of 15 to 49. Yes. So that's already a criteria we use to enroll households, am I correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So most of the households we are working with already have a female in the household. Now, another one is that we, are, we, are, we, are, we have identified, for where we haven't finished, we are still identifying demonstration plots. But I think in Kaduna we are clear, we have demonstration plots already. So in, in certain community that has this criteria, you have access to water. Okay. We we'll now go there and see who is assess the interest of the whole community to our trainings. Then, if you say that these communities have been receptive to us, it means they were interested in what you are telling them. We now find one person that had access to land, 10 by 10, 10 by 9, 10 by 5, 10 by 15, whatever space you can handle, have access to that land that you are willing to give us okay. to demonstrate a home garden. So once we have, we have this plot of land within the, within the community, close to the source of the water, and then the person giving us the garden is the champion of the garden, okay. so to say. But he's not the one doing the work, but he's responsible for management. Mm. So when you can't go and water every day, he should ensure that this water is happening every day. Understood. You understand? And when there is need to impute, he has to be present in every single training, every single field day you have, the person has to be present. So when you are done, and the community member don't get something, you know that there's somebody you focused on that served as a champion to step it down, even when you are not there. Sure. And then he can also link to you to support, and then you have a WhatsApp group to link to her to support. So there's a system. Yeah. Understood.
Now, for the so a challenge you mentioned around um, inputs. Yes. So that was already that was something that we identified. So to solve, we are planning in this intervention to de to develop a seed system. Okay. But we can't go and say come and start selling seeds. Yeah. We need to show them the importance of why you need to. Then don't force anybody. Who is in, who is ready? The way somebody is giving us the land, yeah. because it feels it's going to be interesting. Mm -hmm. And then let's not disappoint them. Let's make it interesting. <coughs> then we will find someone also that is willing. Because if everybody in the community in the cluster, mm -hmm. to put it more specific, mm -hmm. is having home gardens, and the next year I need to buy seeds. And <laughs> for instance, those of you in the area, you are in Garin Amina, yeah. and then you need to go down to Uchichi to get your seed. But then somebody is just there by the junction that knows that all these two communities here have small, 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 small mm -hmm. families, yeah. and they will need seed. Mm -hmm. Just open a small business. You can, you know, they won't buy seed every day. Mm -hmm. When the seed time comes, you are there, you go back to Uchichi and do everything. Yeah. So yeah. that's the seed system. We will we'll think around that. It's a mm -hmm. working process. Sure. We will think around all those. So those are some of the. Um, Checks that have been put in place to solve the challenges we've had, and then to also achieve. Given some of them with potentials, you can yeah. you can sell the seeds yourself. Yeah, yeah. Some of you yes, with potentials. Yeah, with it's yeah. something very handy. You know, like maize seed, rice seed. I can put seeds of ten million in this bag. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can put ten million worth of seeds so in this bag, and you don't want to have 10, yeah. 10 million. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I'm vegetable I'm seeds are small, small parts. And aside from that, another thing is you are a point of contact in the community. Yes. So if you, you, you okay, I need seed, then you know how to get the seed, get the seed to them. Aside from that also, this seed might be just to give you foresight because we've thought around it too. And mm -hmm. I said we can think in the office. Mm -hmm. but what's happening is different. Mm -hmm. So we have to work with you. But then one thing we've thought about also is access to this seed. Yes, we have created a seed system. Can I buy the seed? Mm -hmm. I say a pack of seed. Um, it has 300 grams, you see, 300 grams, it's just the weight. And it's costing me 3,000 naira. And I just have one small ruga, one small settlement. And see my city space I want to plant with it too. A part of city is too much for me to plant there. But we have several groups in this community. Mm -hmm. That's where they come in. Yeah, exactly. So we are in a group, right? I have bring 20, 20 naira. Or you gather everybody, so let's say bring 30 naira. They sell me, bring 30 naira. Everybody, you know, the, well, first of all, they have to know the benefit of the guy. First. So, you can't just tell somebody to buy it. So that's why you're demonstrating. And then you have somebody that is the champion of the garden. He, you can, they can also see the person making use of the produce from his own garden. It's his garden. Then one other challenge she mentioned is hands-on practice, where she mentioned hands-on practice. Yeah. So the truth is also I'm, I'm creating a guide where we'll talk with the communities and then we'll identify specific households. Also with the have women mm. of that same age bracket and also probably children the age of five, where one person from household Specifically, the woman. If not, then maybe due to certain conditions, maybe a man will be identified between 10 to 20, depending on the size of the land, too. I will always, whenever there's a field day, they come together and everybody's practicing. So you are there, like, okay, no, don't do like this. I know that's not what you should do. I just want you to make sure that's why I'm learning this now. So you step down, make sure that everybody gets the message. I hope. Yeah, I think there are major operations you don't take for granted. For example, when you are sewing, you do a very good mobilization so that they come to see. Then the normal practice is to water the nursery. Mm -hmm. Then there might be one or two operations where you have to fertilize the nursery. You call them back. Because not every day they go there. Everybody is busy, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Then another key one is the transplanting date. They need to be there to see how the transplanting is done. Then there could be again, usually there are about five or six major operations on farm anyway. Then another operation could be, okay, maybe when you want to fertilize. It could be that you're fertilizing three, four, five, ten times in a cropping cycle. But as much as possible, some of those fertilization, either the first, the second, the third, the fourth, or the fifth, you try to pull people together and you make a proper what, address of, okay, this is how to do the fertilization. Then there could be weeding. There could just be one major weeding. Okay, today we're coming to weed and everybody comes around, sees the plant, do the weeding. There could be again spraying of chemicals that they need to come and see, okay, you need to measure this quantity to this quantity of water, mix it, these are the precautionary measures you need to take, and then you do it like this. That is also a major operation. Then there are two important fields. Maybe when the whole field is green, you call people again to say, okay, this is the flowering stage of our tomato, for example, if we're using tomato. And then they all appreciate and say, wow, we've never seen a thing like this. 
Then the last, second to the last will be harvest, but we're combining with utilization, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, so that's where yes, harvesting yes. Is, is, is vegetable. So the, the, the demonstration for the utilization will be when we're doing the harvest and then we're bringing to table to tell them, okay, fine, today we harvested pumpkin. And of course, maybe they don't know the different utilization of pumpkin. Of course, they have their pumpkins, that the kabiwa. They use it maybe for soup. And then it's highly nutritious. And then if you go to other countries, you discover the same pumpkin is used for soup. The way you do, okay, let's say like pap, the way you do your pap. But then usually you cut into pieces, you cook, you put all the condiments, you, you mesh. And it becomes liquid like pap. And you give it to children. And it, it's very, very good for what? For children, even adults. Take it like soup and it's highly nutritious. Unlike here, I think we use kabewa virtually when we don't have to make that, we take in the soup. Isn't it? That's how we use kabewa. But I've traveled to countries where they cut it like yam, boil it and eat it, fantastic. Mm. Yes, and then the varieties we're going to give you, they are very good varieties that is tasty. It's even sweeter than yam. Yes, some people use sauce and they eat the kabewa very good. Don't worry, why? No, it, you boil it like yam and then you can eat it with sauce. You can even eat it. Even the yam, you see people boiling and you're eating yam like that, isn't it? And it will be filling. So I'll send you a lot of pictures once we start the group and then we'll discuss a lot on utilizations and then you learn from other countries and things like that. Yes. I think I'm done. Yeah. We're all okay, right? Yeah. So we we'll head to the field now. Okay. okay. Thank you. So welcome to this um, practical session. And how was the theoretical part? Did we enjoy it? We enjoyed it. You did, right? Okay. So we're out here in the field to see how these things look like in real life. And of course, you'll be exposed to different ways of raising seedlings. This is, let me say, the most sophisticated part. And of course, it has obvious advantages to use the seedling tree. Uh, it's not readily available and we might not step it down, but it's good we know it. And of course, as uh, enlightened persons, you might want to have it in your own house because it's handy. Just two or three trays for your home gardening makes it very efficient. You don't need a special place to raise the nursery. So we're going to do the, we're going to use the seedling tray for raising the nursery. We're also going to try a hands-on on how to do it on the ground. There's also a, another local way of doing it this way, which we will call, which we call it the the leaf pot. Abdul, you can help me with a few leaves. Yeah, because there are advantages while we use the seedling tree. If you look at it, they are partitioned into cells. So it's like every plant has its own food, has its own water, has its own space. But you can imagine when you broadcast it on the ground, they compete for a lot of things. So apart from doing it this way, even the ground nursery where the farmers do the broadcast, we have an improved way of doing it so that we separate them a little bit away from each other, that they don't have to compete for light, for space, and for nutrient. And sometimes when you have it in the seedling trees, less chances of disease spray, spreading. Because on the ground, when you put water, the disease from one part of the bed will take it to the other part, yeah. But here you water, and if there's a particular portion that has an infection, you discover that it doesn't affect the rest. It's just like when you have communicable diseases, your acts don't be overcrowded in a room and things like that. So the same principle applies to this. So basically we'll expose you to three types. One is the seedling tree. The second one is the leaf pot. You use local leaves to create an environment that looks like this and you plant inside. And when it's ready for transplanting, like this, if it's ready for transplanting, this is not too matured, you will have to pick it out. This is not so mature about showing you one. It comes out with everything. The roots are just developing. It's not yet ready for transplanting. This is papaya. Yeah, this is papaya sitting. And it has like two different stages of nursing. Right? So that's one. Then Abdul will also demonstrate to you the second one, which is the leaf pot. This one is, you can do this one in the rural areas because leaves are available. You can also use um, banana leaves as well. So you can use banana leaves, you can use um, plantain leaves, you can use mango leaves. And I'm happy, mango is 
readily available in the environment. And you can use sticks like this to like tag it. You will do it, I'm sure. So you do the tag, you tag it. Or broomsticks, okay. women. I didn't say you should finish your brooms at home. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like this. So all you need to do, imagine this is soil. I'm just giving an example. You fill it with the local soil that you know. Mm -hmm. Then you get a, like a plastic container. Uh, you know these um, containers we use to water? The yellow ones now, mm -hmm. 25 liters. You can cut it into two or you can use trays. And then all you need to do is to arrange several leaf pots. Then you plant one inside. All you need to do is to water. Once it's ready for planting, you don't need to do anything special. You pick it and just put it down. This will decay. In fact, before it gets to the time where you do the planting, this will already have turned brown. Mm -hmm. And of course, this is yet another source of what manure because mm -hmm. it will decay. Mm -hmm. So th that's the leaf pot style, which I will advise we teach them because it's interesting. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't have access to that. Exactly, yeah. he's already doing it, see? Mm -hmm. You fill it with the soil. And then all you need to do is to put them firmly and they support each other. Once we create the WhatsApp group, I'm going to send you pictures of the ones we've done. All you need to do is to come and just water, fertilize, and but you ensure that it's in a sunny place so that it doesn't elongate. Mm. Exactly. Good. So that's by the way, we still will practice. We'll give you leaves to practice so that you know how to do it. So basically, where you have the seedling tray, which is the very advanced one, but not too advanced, right? It depends on the number of cells. Uh, as a rule of the thumb, when sowing, especially when we're doing the ground nursery, you shouldn't bury a seed twice its depth. Meaning smaller seeds are expected to be more on the surface and bigger seeds can afford to go a little bit lower. Because there are times where you sow, you sow too deep and then it doesn't grow. So this is the seedling tree. Abdul will take you through the process of that, which is normal. Then this is the pit moss. It's more like a compost, right? And then we have the cocoa pit. But before you get here, but I think Abdul, they've mixed this one. Uh -huh. It comes in a block. This one is a lot. So if you want to soak this, you have to soak it in a very big container, right? Like a very big bath. You soak it overnight and then you wash it and it will disintegrate into this. But this is basically fiber. It's basically fiber, right? So this will help the roots to network very well. It gives that grip. But this is more of what? some source of energy for the plant when it begins to grow. Mm -hmm. But most at times, you have to do the mixing. It's just like you have rice and beans. You mix mm -hmm. it, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Exactly. So these are the basic things you need for nursery. So we're going to go through the process of this already mixed. So he's going to feed it in here. But these things come like this, industrially mixed. And certainly, you know, we don't find it in this country. They are all imported products. Okay. Good. Okay, you mean this is a mixture of this thing? Exactly. Equal yeah, or equal or ratio. Or so or you or still or feed it in and then you do the planting and of course one seed per cell, right? So once we're done with this, we'll do a hands-on on the leaf pot and try to maybe fill it in and arrange it in a place and then the last one we'll go through is the ground nursery. Mm -hmm. We'll find a space, we'll show you how to make a, a mini bed and then we we'll show you how to do the spacing. You plant, you cover, you water, you do the mulching. Once we're done with that, we go into the field to explain a few technologies. We're done. Okay, fine. So Abdul will take over now and take us to... So, like what we discuss in class is just like a practical session mm -hmm. where we have uh, everything we discuss in class briefly explained here. But as time goes on, when you get to feed, you get to understand better because you can't learn everything at once. Exactly. So like what uh, my madam has said, pit moss, cocoa pits, it's all been mixed here at ratio one to one. Mm. So <clears throat> when you're having this, let's, the ratio one to one I meant was, uh, when you have one full and like this mm. of this, after it has been washed, dissolved and been washed, you get one and of this mixed thoroughly. That is when you have one to one equal ratio so what you will do now is after you've mixed this what you now do is you fill into this 
sell seedling things. This is like I told you the other time I said we have uh, two types of sowing. We have the ones uh, sown on seedling trays and the one on the ground nursery. So what we we'll do is to fill it and when you are filling you make sure it's firm. This is how you feel. Okay. You can all see. And you make sure you press. You press so that it will be firm. Please, who can remember me the name of this thing? Coco? Coco, what? Coco butter. I beg. Cocoa pit is cocoa pit. Why this one is what? If the men mad, they don't even try to say. At least you must say cocoa butter. So you can see. But when you are pressing and your hand is going inside, you know it's not firm. So you make sure you feel it so that it will be firm. The reason being that when when you are watering, it won't expose your seeds, okay. and this the media will not will not uh, expose your seed, and as well it will not empty to the extent that look at this place. This is the essence of filling it to to be firm, family. You can see, and you can see, but the one that is firm, it will still be there. The watering also determines it splashes. when it splashes. Yeah. So let's have the women. So let's. Women test. She knows what to do. Just watch. Just watch the women in action. At least I told you what to do. Mm. So, my women will ask me. Yes, Go and show us how to film. Focus. My day is She said, <laughs> when, <laughs> when. Like this one that you did. Mm. Is this thing not like five, ten <laughs> times <laughs> bigger than this? Yes. Right? It's good we're learning, but if you do it once, you won't get it wrong. Mm -hmm. See what you do. Okay, At once. Okay. Wow. And if you want to do, you can do it all through. Then you come back and begin to put. Because sometimes, mm -hmm. if you put and close, mm -hmm. by the time you come back, you can't mm -hmm. remember. Mm -hmm. So once you do this, you finish the planting, and you are sure of what you're doing mm -hmm. before you cover. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So continue, let's see. The way she did. Just stand here so that you're facing the camera. Remain there. Mm. You can let her be here yeah, so that you don't cover. Here. Oh, it can be. No, no, just don't worry. Grab. Mm -hmm. okay. it so that you are going ah. straight. Mm -hmm. huh? yeah. 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 Two, if you use two, you're faster. Yes. Yes. So if you do okay. like, yeah. Ah, yeah. correct. I like that you can because when you make me that statement. Mm. It didn't make sense. Well, you should shake sense. your hands mm. smooth. Yeah, I like the way she's. No, it's one, one, one per hole. How many did she put for Four. 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 Yeah, it's all too shallow. It's no, it's okay. Wait, it's okay. You bring your hand. You see? It's one per hole. Right, let me have this. Plant those ones and you come back. You don't need to cover. Just plant and move. Okay. Yes, Pascal, you have a single seedling. Just like you see there. So you don't waste your seeds. 
and then again the essence of the tree is defeated because we begin to compete yes inside uh -huh. one small space exactly one small space so actually it would be better than two to bring us so this is for bridge people continue this way the local one will just just yeah you know it's not good but then again mm. we've also like um, only to spray it uh, improves that method mm. that you can do something that will give you a better result than the broadcast. Than the broadcast. Yeah, that one will still show you. Yeah. So but for the leaf pot, for the leaf pot that is that big, is it still one plant? Yes, yes still one. it's still one. I think that's soil efficiency, it's my still soil one. management. It's still one. It's for home gardening. Then, then you can try, you soil. can, you can try to Red, reds, yes. But for me, the bigger the better. The bigger the, the better because. So many which works best? Is it wheat or depth? No, the depth is good. <laughs> so the reason for using seedling trees is you know the actual amount of seeds you need yeah, yeah, you don't yeah. not uh, no room for wastage yeah, exactly. since you know this and on 105 cells mm. you know that yes when you have 10 when you have 10 you should know that that is around 10 or 150 seedlings mm. so that is when you but when you are trying when you are using on the on this soil you wouldn't you won't be able to quantify mm exact number of seedlings you have on the soil you understand mm -hmm. so that is the advantage and this one you can take it to anywhere you can you can see with you can secure it from this place to yeah sorry one you see i was very good in estimating i mean a true one Yes. Yes. The true one, you see, yes. that means I counted my seeds. <laughs> it's not seed. It's, it's not seed. Not I see one seed here now. Can I have a one? I see one seed here. No seed. Yes, no be seed. So I think I think they deserve for. So please let's clap for them, please. So the next thing to do now is uh, you. Oh, can you can tell us what? What they think we should what do. What should you think we should do? Should we water now? Water now? No, 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 So if you are using soil, you do the same thing? Yeah. 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 I'm sure Baba goes to farm right now. Like, no time to waste oh, session. Yeah, large. No mm. money. Okay. Don't feel it at times you do. Just level. Level. Level it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yes. what next? Who can tell us what? Water. Water. Good. How would you water? How do you water? You don't you don't get it closer okay. because of the the pressure it's so that it won't expose the seeds so and how do you get to know if the water is okay or you keep watering until you get tired Okay. Yeah, you can see it's still dripping, yeah. still. So for you to, oh. it's dripping, right? So you can see when you lift, you can see it's already dripping. Yeah. No, no. You can see. 
Two trays. Two trays. So, any questions so far on seedling trays? It's this pepper. Pepper takes longer time, but uh, no, that is for tomatoes. Yeah, for pepper, it takes because of the seed coat. If you see, it's very tough, it's very hard compared to that of tomato. Tomato is soft than the the pepper so pepper takes like a week or two before it even germinates before you can see it shooting out but if it were tomato tomato is like four days yes but for this it takes a week or two weeks it also depends on the weather do you understand so the transplanting now depends on the weather as well and the growth rate if the growth is fast and when you have like five to six true leaves, then you can transplant. True leaves simply means the new leaves. You know, when it's coming out, it's coming with two leaves. So the true leaves, when, you are, when I say four to uh, five to four leaves, it's when the new leaves, the new leaves, not the first two, but the other two, the other leaves that comes out of after that two is the true leaves. Yes, yes, this, case, yes, yes. this is you can see after this one when we now have like five to six for pepper, but for tomato it's three, four. Okay, after this one, after this one, at four leaves you can transplant. Keep your dates, keep your dates. You can't predict matters, it might not favor your the growth rate. So like this one now, you can transplant, because there are two stages, like what Madame said, there are two stages for transplanting papaya. This, you transplant it in this black sacks. Mm -hmm. So this, it, it stays one month, one month here. One month on the tray. One month one here. Month or, two months, or two months, depending on the weather and also the growth as well. Then you, before you go in, before you transplant it to the field directly. Yeah. yeah. Here, here for papaya. What are we Pepper for the germination. It's a week to two weeks, depending on weather. And transplanting, and transplanting from thirty days. You can transplant, but for tomato, it's from forty. You you watch for from fourteen to twenty-one days. At max twenty-five, it's off the trace. Mm, trace. Cabbage is the same. They belong to the same family. Yes. Um, uh, cabbage is uh, it's in cucubit family. Brassicas. They are they depend. But you see, uh, garden egg, tomato. They belong to the Solanaceae family. You understand. But you see, cabbage, uh, broccoli. Uh, this the broccoli you saw the uh, what was it called? Let me see the this thing. This they all belong to all uh, cabbage family. So they also take uh, one to twenty five days to transplant. Thank God, Madame mentioned of fertilization. The way you fertilize here depends. There are two methods. You can do this method like this. Liquid, and if you, you you can't do this, you can drench. You have a bowl like this. You fill it after you've diluted your fertilizer and, and the amount of fertilizer you want to apply. It depends when you apply when you are using uh, was uh, calcium nitrate, MPK twenty twenty twenty, MPK fifteen fifteen fifteen. So you can if you dilute at one gram to one liter. So you make sure the yeah no, it depends. A crate can take more than two liters. It can take three liters. But just make sure that one liter of water is you are using one gram of fertilizer. How can I obtain one gram? The cover of this uh, bottle water is five grams. When it's not full to, when it's just full to level, is five grams. Then you use it for, you use it for uh, one gallon. Or five liters of fertilizer of water. You understand? Five one uh, cover of bottle water 
to five liters of water. That is one gallon. You understand? So when you do that, not one bottle, cover. Cover of the bottle. Please, uh, you, you are bringing it, right? This, when it's filled to like this, this is five grams. You dilute in five liters. One cover. Yes, eh? Five, this is five grams to five liters. If you don't have digital skill, you can use this like a farmer. Farmer doesn't have, so we use this as a measuring scale for farmers mm. to yeah. benchmark. To benchmark, yeah. So, and what time? At what time do you apply for tomato at uh, ten to twelve days? That is the first application. You make sure you apply the water. The second one probably after three, four days. Depending, when you are using smaller cells, it requires more nutrients. So like two, three days you should be applying. But when it is wide one like this, you can be applying three, four days. Any question? That is if you are using smaller cells. But for this kind of cells, it's three to four, four days. So you can water three times. I mean, you can fertilize three times before transplanting. And for good establishments while on the field, it's better you use, when you want to, uh, prior to transplanting, you should use calcium nitrate. Calcium nitrate helps to root develop, it helps in root development. It also helps the plant to establish itself. In terms of, no, calcium nitrate is the name. It helps to it helps to develop cell it helps in cell division. Calcium. So by the time you are transplanting it, it will just establish. And for instance, you want to tackle maybe your nursery is uh, deficient in nitrogen. When you apply at let me say when you apply today, tomorrow you see the effect of calcium nitrate. But well, basically, you might not have the calcium net. I'm just telling you for your personal consumption. But for sure, what you'll be using is 15, 15, 15. That is the common one. Any question? So we can just... Like, I, like we discussed in class, I said we have two methods of sowing in the nursery. We have the ground nursery and uh, seedling trees. We just discussed on and, and we show how the seedling trees works. On this, this is a ground nursery, but in an improved way, unlike the farmer's practice. We all know what Baba said the other time was, we broadcast. No, we don't do that. For you to have, for instance, you don't have uh, the financial uh, power to buy seedling trees, to buy the cocoa peat, to buy the peat moss. So what you need to do is to follow, if you follow it here, it might not give you the same result as the seedling trees because you can't move this one. And for instance, you don't know what is inside the soil. You need to treat your soil very well. Make sure it's, you treat in terms of uh, you sterilize. Sterilization is just to prepare the land from all the soil borne diseases. So by doing that, you've killed to some extent, you've killed uh, the soil borne diseases for your, and your, pl your plants to grow easily your seedlings to grow easily. So in an improved way, what we do is you draw a line. You make, a, you drill a line. The bed size for this, I don't want to be asking questions for us not to take much of our time. Yeah, the bed size should be a kind of area where you can, you can easily manage. For instance, when you have like 10 meters, you know you can't stretch to 10 meters wide you have to enter the bed before doing some practice this operation on the bed but when you have like a meter then you can have like 50 meters long sorry you can have 50 meters long in as much that you can easily cross to the other side because we all know one meter is like this is something like this you can walk from both sides when you are done working on this side you can easily cross to this side and walk probably you want to remove uh, you want to remove and pick the weeds you want to fertilize or you want to water you want to do some operations like that 
You understand? So that is why we ensure you don't use a wider a ridge, a wider bed. It should it shouldn't be more than one meter wide. Then it can any length. Am I making sense? Yes. Yeah. So uh, this this is what you do. You give a space. Just then, like those holes. Just like the holes. Mm -hmm. Don't make it too deep. You can see this just. Please, who can tell us the reason of giving the space? So that water should easily penetrate. Water should easily penetrate. Even if you broadcast, even if you, even if you broadcast water will penetrate when you water very well. So the, the plant will grow faster. Even that one too will grow faster. <laughs> we keep on saying this over and over again. Competition. Competition. Yes. Competition. Competition. Space. Space. Light. light. Space, when you want to fertilize, you don't just broadcast your fertilizer. What you do here is after you finish your planting, you make sure you drill another line again and they've grown. They've grown. Not as after you uh, you are planting. After they must have grown, maybe probably like ten days to twelve days, like I said there. Then you drill the middle. This one, it's economizing your fertilizer because this roll is picking from this fertilizer this roll is also tapping from this fertilizer when you fertilize you make sure you water heavily so that there will not be fertilizer burnt do you get it so next thing now is for us to sow my place they said So uh, this is how you so please come closer. Which one is tedious? This one is easier. We have to drop or we are not to drop. So this is how it will arrange. This is how it will go. Yes, this is how it's going to go. No. People will come and practice. You be so you guys come and we didn't plant among the men. You? Did you plant? No. Not even plant. Not even anything. You can start from that side. <laughs> but I didn't see it here. <laughs> you can start from the other line. Just. You do have a No, son. So and you can see what I discussed with you people then, that you should make a a bank. Water cannot because it's dry season. But draining season, no need for this. This is the bank. This is the bank I was talking about. So this will not make the water to to be wasting. It's, it will remain inside. But if it is in the rainy season, it's not it's mm. Yeah, that's all. Let him finish. So, you are, so how do you close? How do you cover? Cover and let's see. Cover and let's see. Make sure when you are covering, you don't cover heavily. So that it can easily sprout out. You understand? So you don't cover heavily. Make sure you cover lightly. Yeah. And when you want to water, please get me the water. When you are watering, yeah. When you are watering, you don't just pour water like this. No, so that it won't expose the seeds. So what you do is, excuse me.
because it is wet, mm. you don't need to water again. You have to mulch first. Mm. Mulch it, then you now spray water. You water through the mulch. Do you understand? Yes. You water through the mulch, through the mulch, the water will be dripping. Because this is wet, but if it is not wet, you make sure you water first. You make sure you water first before you before you are uh, mulch, before you cover it with mulch. And when you are planting this, please, you need to be observant. As soon as you see one seed shoot out, remove the mulch. Is that the yield? Yeah. For the one that is coming out. The f if you see one the seed one out. shooting out, that whitish stuff, yeah. remove the mulch. Understood. Get it? Mm -hmm. Because when you say, okay, it's because it's one, mm. before you come back the following day, all of them will come out, all of them will come out and they will elongate. <laughs> and if you are removing it, you will go out with it. So it's better you remove that, as you are seeing one, Just remove, remove everything. Wow. Or if you can't remove everything, reduce the mulch so that there will be little sun penetration. There will be little. Any question? So please let's move to the other side just to show you the so uh like what we discussed in class i said uh, there are two types of mulch if you can remember i said there is organic and inorganic right organic mulching and uh, inorganic mulching two types the organic mulching is when we use the straw rice straw when uh, mr muhammad said uh, maybe we can use the maize straw uh, maize ox too to cover our soil but the essence is just to cover the top soil in order to what who can remind who can remember us who can remind us the so that the, the water will dry good and again what weed control you can see if not for the the point that we we bore O into this place you wouldn't have seen this grass here others have you seen grass it suppresses the grasses so for you it's like it's good if you can mulch this because you don't need to water you don't need to weed again nothing like weeding water you can only water when you observe that okay probably there is a water stress or you feel that okay let me just water if you don't have much water this will help you conserve your water and it also repels some insects do you understand so you can see the essence of mulching Mulching is very, very important and very essential in, uh, in plant growth. It helps you to keep moisture. Look at, compare this and this. The one that is not fully mulched and the one that is mulched. You can see even from the leaves, which one is more healthier? This one. So you can see the essence of mulching. I believe most of us have not seen mulching, but for today's class, you've at least... You've gained something. And again, the staking I said, if, okay, this one is even upright. I wish we can have uh, a plant that is not upright, that is lodging. Tomato, right? So let's use tomato for staking. I just want us to see mulch and you can see the effect of mulching. Right? Good, let's go for tomato and see. What we want to showcase here is staking. You know, I told you trellising or staking yeah. the essence of staking is what for in, for it to give it support Thank to you. give our plant support you can see what the way they stake this i want to lose one plant and see what will happen to it for us to see what happens you can see one plant has like three uh, ropes tied to it mm -hmm. for it to give it support as soon as you are seeing the yeah. ants Yes, I just oh. so as soon as you see the uh, the branches, you pick it. A plant can have like five, six ropes. Mm -hmm. You understand? Just for it to give it support. Let's. This one has like three. Let me lose that many ones. It's four. You can see. I thought it's three, but it's four. What happens to it? 
you can see that is the essence of staking. But when you want to stake, you don't delay for it to be as mature, as fully grown like this. At three weeks, you tie. At three weeks, if it is tomatoes, at three weeks, you tie. And when you are tying, please make sure you don't choke the plant. Make sure you are tying in a, in a, in a place where beneath where the rope can easily move. Because when you choke, um, nutrients will not be able to move. When you are choking, it can easily fall because it has choked and eaten up the flesh of the, the shoot of the tomato. Then it can cut even, it can even make the tomato break. So now when you are tying, make sure you tie. Yes. Make sure you tie firm. And make sure again when you are tying, you are not suffocating this because when you over pull it can pull the plant up when there is breeze so it shouldn't be mod too tight and too loose it should be moderate we can you can equally adjust when it's loose but too firm it's dangerous to the plant so please when you're doing make sure it is a thing that you're doing that can make easily adjustable so when you come to adjust, just pull down and continue. So the other one again, this is another branch. So as, soon, as the plant is uh, growing, you come to twine. You twine the rope to, uh, around the plant and tie again. And for pruning, I discussed something on pruning, especially when you have a bushy tomato, like what uh, Madame rightly said that we don't advise the starters to prune. But when you want to prune, make sure you are pruning the lower branches, not the top ones. When you have like four or five, you have to prune the lower ones. And who can tell me the essence of pruning? I hope we've not forgotten what I discussed in class. No. Like this one. See? You can see. It's diseased. So you can see. So you need to prune. And don't when you prune, please don't drop it on the farm. Make sure you take it outside or you dig a hole, bury and cover. Any question? I think hmm, Madam. I think we are, the baby is tired. Thank you for listening as well. I think I need a